Clarence, welcome back to Bangkok. You're not a stranger here. Thank you. It's good to be back. I'm glad we're this far away. I think it's healthy this afternoon, so I've taken my mask down. Okay, before we get into Thailand and some of the particulars here and maybe some of the things Hilton is doing, let's step back a little bit. Let's not go global industry. Let's go Asia Pacific. Mm. Here in the hospitality industry in Asia Pacific or even ASEAN if you wish, what are some of the what are some of the big challenges that are causing your industry, the bigger hotel chains, to have to pivot, to think differently about their business? Big picture stuff here. Okay, before I answer that, I'd like to address something that Bill said. That you got to fight for your business here in Thailand. When the VTL opened and this was live, right, a lot of us flew in from outside of Thailand. Right? So pent up demand is a real thing. Right? There's a lot of pent up demand in the industry. The idea that you have is that we've been living in a COVID situation for the last two years. And like many things, if you don't speak the language for a while, you don't cycle for a while, we forget. But what I'm trying to tell you is you have to get ready. The demand is real and they will come faster than you think. All right. I, I hope you're right. And I think I will take anybody on a bet on that. <laughs> uh, okay, let's say demand comes fast, but probably not fast enough for Bill Heineke, who made that clear about an hour ago, right? But I think for many in the industry. Talk about, though, what's, what is the pivot, particularly that big asset light management companies like you with big portfolios of brands, or even it could be a medium size. What, what, is, the, what is the shift? How, how do you have to think about your customers differently and to add value? Okay, first and foremost is always about health and security, both for our customers and our team members who work day in, day out to provide the services in our hotels. And the second, right, is that song was so apt before this opening, I'll stand by you. The owners, the operators, and the employees standing by each other. If not, we'll not be here today, right? So I think there's a very much more open communication between operators and owners that we've seen pivoting. And the third pivot that I see is that we are a lot more creative. Bill said the pandemic forced us to act faster, to think faster. It was already coming. We were just ignoring it. We actually acted faster. And those of us who could, we actually reinvented ourselves. We reinvented our brands. We invest in technology. And we made our customer journey a lot more pleasant, a lot more secure, and made our team members feel safer when welcoming guests. I think that's good, the, um, making them feel more important, but also embracing the technology in a humanistic way. So let's bring it a little closer into Thailand. Thailand has many pluses and minuses. We have a large supply. I'm going to lead this. We, have, we also have that demand that you mentioned that's coming. But what's your objective assessment on Thailand as you sit here as one of the leading operators? Look, I've experienced a tsunami of 2004 for Thailand, GFC. Uh, the coup in 2014 and 15, and every time there was a disaster, a crisis, Thailand always bounced back a lot faster. And I think this is no different, but if you allow to wallow in self-pity that this won't come, don't stand united as an industry, don't fight for our business to build it, um, we will continue to suffer. I definitely believe that we can stand together with our owners, with our operators, and asset managers to really get the right demand in. Yes, demand is less, but with more vaccinated travel lanes, travel bubbles, relaxation, higher vaccination rates, more education, people are more, com uh, what do you call, conversant with what Omicron means. Um, uh, our stat says it comes in and out within 45 days, a peak, and then it drops. We've seen that in India, a peak of 45 days, it drops. We've seen that in Australasia, a peak, and it drops and business comes back. So you are just about to hit your peak, and once you hit your peak, business will come back. I think, I think you're uh, on the right track. So historically, here in Thailand, we always have big back, backlog of new hotel rooms, greenfield projects, and some of those are already you know, pregnant. They're going to come out. They're, they have to come. But looking for the next five years, we cannot expect the same level of greenfield projects. So what do we do to be relevant? Well, it's a balancing of demand and supply, unfortunately, right? And if your hotel is not a viable hotel, then I think you need to look at 
what's the next best use of your piece of real estate to remain relevant? Or people like us, international operators, we're always looking for conversions, right? To help you to pivot into a different world with the strength of the brands, loyalty systems, training to get you back on track, right? And I think it's also time to acknowledge that there are a lot of great entrepreneurial owners who are not internationally branded in this room today. And I think the business model that's traditionally here in the managed environment will change. Uh, and this is where I think Hilton will be offering franchising for Hilton Garden Inn and other brands in Thailand very, very soon. Yeah, but why, why does franchising make sense? I mean, think about it in owner's term. I might be doing it myself. I'm an owner, owner operator. I've got a beachfront property. I, I don't really get your full point. Why, why would I want to have a Hilton or a Marriott or a minor brand? Well, as one hotel, your power of reach through marketing, through social media, through advertising is kind of limited. If you join a program, join a brand, that is exponentially given to you to ride on the same wave, one. All of us invest in technology. All of us invest in training on the staff. All of us invest in health and safety. And we do deep dive in analytics. Mm. We share data. You will hear from Jesper later. We're all here to look about data. And data is king, right? It's a new big word out there. And more importantly, uh, we'll continue to evolve our brands, continue to be in keeping with the trends, and at the same time, share the upside. Okay, uh, on the upside, why is that? Give, give me some specifics on if I'm an owner and I take that franchising option, whatever the brand, what, what, what can I expect differently? First of all, I definitely hope you get a higher quality customer mix who is willing to pay more, stay longer, without the five-day test. At the same time, uh, post your hotels on social media and be celebrating their stay in your hotel. And that resonates many, many, many times over. And that's free advertising from one loyal customer. So you mentioned Hilton Garden Inn, but it's not just limited to mid-scale hotels, is it, franchising? Not at the moment, yeah. So you will be, that's a big part of your growth story for not only ASEAN, but here in Thailand. I think everybody has enough headroom to grow our brands in Asia Pacific. And uh, with the right business model, with the right product, and the right owner, with the right uh, connection, right, and alignment, uh, we will definitely get there. Clarence Tan, thank you so much. Good chatting with you. Cheers. Have a good one, everybody.